Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Continuing on our study of Asul al-Sunnah by Imam Ahmed Rahimahullah ta'ala In the last dars, and this is the 16th lecture or lesson, we're talking about Jidal Fiddin, you know, debating or arguing and getting into controversy regarding the religion of Islam, and that the tariqah or the foundation of Ahl Sunnah, according to the Imams of the Sunnah, like Imam Ahmed or Ghairi, is that they accepted the Nusus, they accepted the Quran and the Sunnah and those issues of Aqidah that were um, either set forth in general, put forth in general in the Qur'an or in general in the Sunnah, or that were detailed in the Qur'an and the Sunnah, that Ahlul Sunnah, the tariqah of Ahlul Sunnah, the madhab and the minhaj and the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah is that they accept those things. They don't debate and argue with the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah. They don't ask how. They don't ask why, but they accept those texts and they have Iman in those things about the things that are going to happen in the Day of Judgment. And Imam Ahmed was uh, referring to, he referred to three things in the last uh, text. He said, فَإِنَّ كَلَامْ فِي قَدْرِ وَالرُّؤْيَةِ وَالْقُرْآنِ وَغَيْرِهَا مِنَ السُنِنْ مَقْرُوهٌ مَنْهِيٌ عَنْهُ He said that speaking about the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going into details about things we have no knowledge about and arguing with people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine decree instead of just presenting the nusus and leaving it. And the ru'ya about uh, that the mu'mineen, the believers, will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment as is uh, apparent in the, in the Qur'an and the sunnah. And the... Uh, Debating about the Quran, about it being the divine speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we see the Asha'ira and the various sects that came uh, after the Salaf of this Ummah, that they argued and debated about the Quran. Is it the speech of Allah? Is it created or it's not created? And then you even hear have people in this time who unfortunately still. Uh, try to attempt to reinvigorate those debates or from their own opinion. Again, this is Rai and this is why Imam Ahmed in the other uh, lessons that we, we um, detailed had explained that Imam Ahmed spoke about Ahl Rai, the people of opinion, the people of desires, that it, you know the deen is not based on your Rai. And as uh, I believe it was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala who said, you know, what, what means that if the deen were built upon the rai, upon the opinion, then we would wipe over, we'd wipe, when we wipe over our hoofs, our socks, we'd wipe over the bottom of them. If it was according to our view, in our opinion, in our desires, and what makes sense to us. But instead, we follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sometimes we might know the reason, sometimes we might know the hikmah. And that's great, that's khair. But if we don't, we make tislim. We just follow the nusus of the kitab illa wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as understood by the salaf of this ummah. And so having tislim in the heart and not debating about those issues that the salaf of this ummah did not get into, that they affirmed and they only, uh, the only cause for them to detail and have any debate is in re refutation 
and in opposition to Ahl al-Bid'ah because Ahl al-Bid'ah were the ones who opened up a lot of these debates and arguments. They were the ones, the Qadariya began to question the Qadr of Allah. But before that, although they appeared in the time of the Sahaba, none of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, were upon that. They were all upon the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they accepted the Nusus. They accepted what the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said. They accepted what the Quran said. And, and that was sufficient for them. And they practiced it. And they believed it. Their hearts were content with that. But when those other groups and sects began to appear, that's when it became necessary to clarify the aqid of Ahl Sunnah. And that's when later, the later generations during the, from the Salaf began to uh, compile statements and write about issues of creed. Because before that, it was understood. But when Bid'ah began to be, appear and, be, and become widespread, it became necessary for Ahl Sunnah to lay the foundations of the Sunnah in writing and so forth, and relaying it in, 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 in their narrations and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to those people who debate and argue, Qala subhana bel hum qawmun khasimun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rather they are a people who are argumentative. You know, they're into controversy. And this, as Sheikh Abdulaziz al-Rajihi mentions, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, then he says, so therefore, khusuma, you know, getting into controversy and jidal and debates well, uh, or, or, or argumentation, well, and all, all those various types of ways of, of getting into controversy, that all of that is mavmum, all of it is uh, something that is sinful and disliked according to the text of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he mentions a narration, وَلِهَذَا رُوِيَا الْأَجُورِ fi sharia بِسِنِدْ hasan عن معن بن عيسى قال إن صرف مالك ابن أنس رضي الله تعالى عنه يوم من المسجد وهو متقي على يديه فلاحقه رجل يقال له أبو حرية حرية كان يتهم بإرجاء فقال يا أبا عبد الله يا أبا عبد الله يخاطب مالك اسمع اسمع مني شيء أكلمك به وأهاجك وأخبرك برأي قال فإن غلبتني قال إن غلبتك فاتبع فاتبعني قال فإن جاء رجل آخر فكلمنا فغلبنا قال نتبعه فقال مالك رحمه الله تعالى يا عبا يا عبا عبد الله بعث الله عز وجل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بدين واحد وأراك تنتقل من دين إلى دين Imam, in a narration in uh, Ajuri, in his book Al-Sharia, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned the narration, it's a Hassan narration about Imam Malik, a statement of Imam Malik. A man came to Imam Malik one day when he was, uh, he had left the masjid. Imam Malik had left the masjid and a man came to him, caught him while he was, uh, you know, leaning or, or like leaning or laying on his hands. So the man came to him and the man's name was Abu Huria in this narration, but in another narration or another text, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, uh, they referred to him as Abu Jariya. Or, or something similar to this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, and perhaps there's a mistake in one of these uh, nusus, one of these texts, uh, as far as the name of the man. And this man had been known for 
uh, being of the Murjia or having some aspects of the Murjia creed saying that the the that iman, that faith does not fluctuate or that deeds do not enter into one's iman. For example, those people who say, iman is in my heart, even though I'm doing the sin, I'm still a strong believer. You know, it doesn't affect my iman. That is from irja. That is from the aqidah of the murjia. That is not the aqidah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. That is not the aqidah that is uh, propagated and derived from the Quran, nor the aqidah propagated and derived from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nor the Salaf of this Ummah. But in fact, that was a sect or a particular aqidah and creed that arose later. Uh, of bid'ah, of religious innovation with regards to the creed. So he was known for irja. And he said to Imam Malik, rahimahullah ta'ala, this great Imam, Imam Dar al-Hijra, he said, O Abu Abdullah, listen to me, just listen to something from me that I want to speak to you about. And I want to uh, debate with you on this, or argue with you about this. And I'm going to tell you my, my opinion, my view. How many people do we see doing this? Subhanallah, it's a lesson. So Imam Malik said to him, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said, And what if you win? What if you beat me? The man said, If I beat you, then you should follow me. Imam Malik said, and if another man comes and he speaks to us and he beats us both, then the man said, then we should follow him. Then Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala said, O slave of Allah, O Abdullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with one religion. And I see that you jump from religion to religion, to from basically from aqidah to aqidah, to belief to belief, to minhaj to minhaj. And Imam Malik clarified for him that the, the sunnah, the foundation of the sunnah, is not to involve in debate and argumentation. And he also illustrated for us that that is one of the mufasid, is that it will cause a person to not be on firmness. Because if the person that they're debating with has strong argumentation, even if their knowledge is not sound, even if they're on falsehood, even if the person who's losing is on the truth, but they're just not articulate, then it shows that the truth will not be assisted by that. That in fact it could cause doubtfulness in the person losing or the people listening. And it can cause the person of innovation to believe that what they're doing is on the truth. To believe that their newly found aqidah, their newly found menhaj, their newly found uh, methodology for understanding Islam or propagating Islam is sahih. That's what, that's what it can lead the people to, to, to believe. And so this is uh, something that is uh, incorrect and away from the madhab of the salaf. And we, I think, by basic logic, understand why. Qala, Qala Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, Man ja'ala deenuhu gharadin lil khusumat akthar tanakkal. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, the person who makes his religion based on controversy and argumentation is the person you'll see change the most. Meaning they'll change from madhab to madhab. One day he's on this madhab, next day he's on this madhab, next day he's on this minhaj, he's Salafi this day, he's Sufi tomorrow, he's Tabliki the third day, then he decides to go with the Quran and so he can keep all those beliefs, and he... You, you see that he, he jumps from madhab to madhab instead of following the madhab of, the, of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah and being on the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah, being on the madhab of Ahl Athar wa Ahl Hadith and the Salafi Yun. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them and bless them with ikhlas with the bat, those that are living. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Hafizullah ta'ala. 
Also, in another narration by Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz about, this, about debating, وَعَنْهُ رَحِمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى قَالْ A kalam fi deen illah akrahu. He said that a kalam, you know, speaking and having debate about the religion of Allah, I hate it. You know, I detest it. And subhanAllah, as a fayda, min bab a fayda, you see that recently, in my personal experience, a brother, he's Sufi, he's tested with Sufia, extreme Sufia. He would want to debate me about uh, about the graves and tuwassal bil mate and stuff like this. And I gave him the proofs. We would discuss these things. But you see that his whole foundation, he would praise Kalam. He would cr- praise Ahle Kalam as this, this is a good thing. But the Salaf used to write books, Dhimma Kalam wa Ahlihi. That's a name of us. Of, there's two famous books from the Salaf of this Ummah called Dhimma uh, Kalam wa Ahlihi or, or, or something similar to that. It's called basically the sinfulness and the unpraiseworthiness of, of Ahle Kalam. Of, 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 of debating and Ahl Kalam, the people of debate are, are like this. Because Ahl Kalam, this means Asha'ir and a lot of those groups that have, that have been affected by uh, a lot of philosophy. They have a lot of philosophical aspects of philosophy in their view because they use their intellect to precede the Nusus. So for example, if the Nusus, the text of the Quran and Sunnah does not agree with what makes sense to them, then they make ta'wil. And you'll hear this from their, they'll say themselves, ta'wil, they'll praise kalam, they'll praise all of these things. Uh, and, and you see that that's, that's their madhab, and it's a very dangerous thing, and it can lead to zandaka, it can lead, lead to taking you out of the fold of Islam if you're not careful, getting into debates and praising these philosophies or praising the methodology of philosophy to determine your aqidah. Your aqidah is formed from the nusus. We accept. If Allah negated something for himself, we negate it. If Allah affirms something for himself, we affirm it. If the Prophet wasallam affirmed something or negated something for Allah, we follow his method. And we don't need to ask how or why or explain it or make ta'wil. But the asha'ira, for example, for them it's imperative, a part of their creed, a part of their methodology to you awwal a sifat to to uh, to interpret to make agreements between their intellect and the text so they change the meaning they'll say oh ar rahman ar arsh istawa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself that ar rahman the most merciful rose above his throne ahl sunnah we accept that we don't know how we accept it the ashaira will say well if you say he rose above his throne, that means, you know, the act of rising as a, as a characteristic is unbefitting for Allah because the creation rises. Like, I can stand up now, I can rise above something, or I can descend, I can sit, I can descend down some stairs, or what have you. So, they, in order to flee from that tashbih, because they're scared of making a resemblance between the creator and the creation, which is, is fair enough and, and, and is sound, that you should not, we don't make resemblance between Allah and His characteristics, but we do not negate what Allah said, and then go, therefore, and say, well... That requires me to explain it this way. It means power, or it means istola. It means that Allah uh, took the arsh biqawa, or has the arsh with his power, or something like this. All of these things are based on their intellect, not based on the evidences from the salaf of this ummah. And they're not based on what the Prophet ﷺ said. They're not first and foremost based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. They're not based on what the Prophet ﷺ said. They're not based upon the, the salaf of this ummah, what they said. And so this is why it's imperative to avoid uh, argumentation and debate and stick with the madhab of the, of the salaf of this ummah. Go back. This book is imperative that we understand the foundation of the sunnah of Imam Ahmed and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless it, uh, bless us to gain benefit from it and practice it. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. We'll read another narration before we end. وَعَنْ السَّلَامِ إِبْنِ أَبِي مُطِيعِ أَنَا رَجْلٍ مِنْ أَسْحَابِ الْحَوَى الْأَحْوَى يَعْنِي مِنْ أَحْلَ بِدَعَ قَالَ لِي أَيُوبَ سَخْتِيَانِي 
يا أبا بكر أسألك عن كلمة فولا أيوب وجعل يشير أصابعه ولا ولا نصف كلمة يعني لا يريد يكلم أهل بدع ولا يريد جدال ولذلك قال له ولا نصف الكلمة So in another narration that the Sheikh mentions from the books of the Salaf from uh, Ajuri, Imam Ajuri, his um, his book uh, As Sharia, it's a narration on Salam ibn Abi Mutiyah, where he said that a man from the people of innovation, people of desires, Ashab al Ahwa, meaning Ahl Bida came and said to Ayub Sakhtiani Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said oh Abu Bakr I want to ask you uh, just, a, just a word or about, uh, about a kalima about something so Ayub he turned and he took his, his finger his index finger and he said وَلَا نِصْفَ كَلِمَةً He said, not even half of a word. Meaning, as uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz Raji he said, that he doesn't want to speak to the people of desires, the people of innovation. And he doesn't want to debate. He didn't want to debate. And that's why he said, not even half of a word. And then Sheikh Abdulaziz Raji he said, half of Allah Ta'ala, لَمَّا عَلَمَ أَنَّ أن السائل من أهل البدع والخصومات. So then the Sheikh they should have read that with the other aspect, the other part of the text. So he said that he didn't want to even uh, even uh, debate with him, or or discuss with him, or listen to him, even half of a word. Or half of uh, of anything he wanted to say, me, me make an emphasis that he doesn't want to hear anything from him, uh, and that's because he knew that the questioner was a person of desires, a person from Ahl Bid'ah in innovation. When Muawiyah bin Qurra, rahimahullah taala, قال الخصومات في الدين تهبت الأعمال. So Muawiyah ibn Qurra, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that debating in the religion will destroy your good deeds. And then I will end with this last statement of Imam Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala. Qala Hassan ibn Ali al-Barbahari, rahimahullah ta'ala, fi shara sunnah. قال وكلام جدال وخصومة في في القدر خاصة منه عنه عند جميع الفرق لأن قدر سر الله ونها الرب جل اسمه الأنبياء عن كلامي في القدر ونها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخصومات في القدر وقر أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تابعون وقريه العلماء وأهل الورع ونه عن الجدال في القدر فعليك بالتسليم وإقرار والإيمان واعتقاد ما قال له رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في جملة في في جملة الأشياء وأسقط عن ما سوى ذلك. A beautiful, beautiful statement by Imam Barbahari. We'll end the lesson with that. Imam Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, and he is also one of the salaf of, of, of our ummah, he was on the madhab uh, of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, kalam, you know, debating and, and speaking and arguing and controversy around the qadr, the decree, divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially, is prohibited to all the various uh, groups. And that is because the Qadr is from the secrets of Allah. Meaning Allah, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in depth about the, His divine decree. He gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
so much knowledge about it, who he articulated alayhi salatu wasalam to us. And he told us to keep silent about those things. So this is from, the Qadr is from the secrets, the secret of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our Lord, glorified be his name, uh, prohibited it. Or he prohibited the NBA, the, 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 the prophets, from speaking about the Qadr. And the Prophet ﷺ also prohibited debating about the Qadr. So these are, it's haram. And the companions of the Prophet ﷺ also hated that people would speak about the Qadr. And the Tabi'un, you know, their students, those, those people who met the Sahaba ﷺ and died upon Islam and the other conditions for being a Tabi'i. And the ulama disliked or hated, and ahla wara, the people, the the the, the salihun, the righteous people of, of of piety and humbleness, who who Allah blessed with hikmah and ibadah, they also hated to discuss the, about the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa taala. You know, to get into de- they they didn't debate and argue. This is the minhaj of the salaf, and they all prohibited. Uh, arguing about the Qadr. So it is upon you to be, to accept it. To believe in it. And have comfort in your heart regarding it. And have it from your creed. Uh, and, and believe the statement of what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in general about uh, the things that he spoke about in general. We believe it. And we don't detail it. And keep silent about those thing, other, other things other than that. So Ahlul Sunnah, that shows right there, the clar- uh, clarifies for us the minhaj and the, uh, the usula sunnah, the foundation of Ahlul Sunnah, or one of the foundations of Ahlul Sunnah, <coughs> is that they avoid controversy and debating about uh, issues of the creed. <coughs> And speaking without knowledge, getting into controversy, debating and even speaking with Ahl Bid'ah, those people who are people of desires, who you see that there's no hope in talking and discussing with them. All they want to do is attack and challenge and challenge the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people, leave them, especially if you don't have the ability and the conditions aren't there for you to debate them. And leaving off that this is the, the, the madhab of Ahlul Sunnah and keeping silent about those things which we don't have knowledge about. And a last thing I want to benefit, uh, I mean, I want to speak about as a benefit for us, <coughs> inshallah ta'ala, is regarding, for example, we have individuals who call, who are du'at, and they gather the youth around them they're very popular and they give you hadith and the Prophet ﷺ, they talk about the day of judgment and they go into details about things that are not detailed and they try to make things that are from those ahadith applicable to situations that we deal with now for example they'll get into detail about certain signs of the Day of Judgment and about issues in the Sunnah which are there in the Sunnah. We don't negate that. Those are, that's from the Sunnah, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We affirm them, we believe in them. But when you try to apply it to the situation at hand, for example, saying the dollar bill, well, the dollar bill has a, an eye on it in the pyramid and this means this, this is the sign of the Dajjal, this is that. And they speculate. They go in so far over their heads, they're drowning in controversy. They're drowning in bid'ah away from the Salaf, away from the Medhab of the Salaf. Beware. And we've already mentioned those narrations countless times, what Ahl Sunnah said about this, so that is sufficient. Beware of those people and those ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he, he warned us to be away from those people who speak about things that you never heard about, nor did your fathers hear about. 
beware them and warn against them. This is a narration of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is, uh, was collected in Shara Sunnah Imam Bagawi. Letting us know that when we hear things and people speculating, making videos, making cassettes inter- uh, all over the internet, talking, going in detail about issues that were not detailed in the Sunnah. Or they gave us some, some detail in the Sunnah and we believe in that, we leave it. But we don't try to say, well, this means this. The president is symbolic of this. This country is this. Because it's an empire, it's this. And no, the Illuminati said this. The, no. We leave it, we, we accept the Nasus, we go back to the Nasus, we make Tislim with the Nasus, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.